God is good and with each day that passes brings us a day closer to the launch of Pantheon Rise of the Fallen. This is the Nathan Napalm channel and if you are new please consider subscribing especially if you're interested in Pantheon related content on our March to launch. Today I want to talk about that Pantheon is not simply bringing back the old school MMORPG genre. It is doing that because it is going to be a social environment it is going to be a memorable gaming experience it is going to be hard and difficult and have the risk versus reward yes and all that harkens back to the old school mmorpgs that we loved and cherished back in the day however it's doing more than just slapping a, a, a pretty a very pretty by the way coat of paint on on an old system it is evolving the mmorpg genre it is Taking what used to be and what made MMOs awesome and so impactful on the players and then it's evolving that further. I always like to say, this is kind of like, forgive me to the fans of the game, but before World of Warcraft happened, where MMORPGs were going at that time and then moving forward with it. So let's talk about what I mean because I can talk all day about what exactly it's going to feel like, but let's talk about actual systems in the game that are going to implement the feelings that I'm talking about. So in my opinion, the very first thing that makes Pantheon so much different than MMOs of the past would be the perception system. In a nutshell, right, I have videos specifically about the perception system that you can check out on my channel but to sum it all up nobody says it better than vr so what they say is that one of the most profound things about pantheon is how they are designing the game from the ground up so that the environment truly matters they want players to care about the world they are in and why things are the way that they are so when you think of mmos when is the last time you discovered the meaning or the history or the lore or the secrets of a person place or event without being told by a text box. Visionary Realms has conceived a way to bring players back to exploring because they are compelled by what they see in front of them, not because a blinking light or exclamation point or question mark tells them to go there. In Pantheon, wizards will be able to perceive things that a warrior cannot. Through prayer, a cleric may gain insight into an area, a creature, and a rogue would never know that. Through their perception system, Pantheon is going to redefine how the game world becomes known and how players will work together to progress. And it's a very complicated system. It, it's about what race are you? What class are you? Have you leveled up your perception by taking advantage of the system in the past? What branches have you taken on that system? Etc. So as you can see, there's a lot of variables. This makes the questing and the finding out about lore system in the game organic and something that just naturally happens to you and you can decide yes i want to find out more about this place or you know what i don't care and move on and that's up to you but keep in mind it's all going to affect other things and other systems that can happen to you later on so it's it's just a massive part of the game and that that alone changes it if that was the only system in the game that was going to make it different or, or the pantheon difference or, or evolve the genre, I would be okay with it because honestly that sounds amazing. That is exactly, I mean I, I can't think of another way that they could do it that would be even better than that. Like they took the way things really work in real life and just made it into the system of the game. So I really like that. I'm a big fan of the perception system. But let's move forward. What else do we have that is evolving it? Well this is a PVE or player versus environment focused game. And there's a couple of things in that system that ha are having some very big evolutions. Number one would be the atmosphere and the climate. So the climate, the atmosphere, however that zone is, some zones or pockets of zones are enchanted with certain things. Darkness, silence, a tour you can't use spells, poison, tornadoes that travel through the region. All kinds of different things. It could be raining and raining, you know, the actual weather. Raining with lightning means that lightning spells will, will do more damage or will crit more often. And, and all kinds of these systems playing together with the actual environment. Not just it's raining because that gives you a, a you know, a cool feeling because it's raining outside, right? Which is awesome you know it creates an atmosphere it creates immersion that alone but taking it a step further where it actually changes things 
uh, you know, the way that you're playing the game, etc. I'm very excited about it. I think it's really cool and really going to change a lot of the small details. And that's what Pantheon's all about. They take these small little details and then they just make this complicated, awesome, fun challenge to the game that was not even necessary but it's evolving what we've known before and i love it and i honestly think a lot of developers in the future are definitely going to be taking note of some of this and then trying to expand it even further and that is great i honestly don't know if anybody besides visionary realms will be able to pull it off but i'm a little biased so you know we'll move forward what else do we have with the player versus environment that they're changing since that is the bulk of the game. Well, the next big thing I would want to talk about would be the NPC encounters, okay? Because they're trying to make those dynamic because, let's be honest, in an MMO, unless you uh, focus down on crafting, which, go right ahead, the game is going to have a very robust crafting system as well. We still have as much details, so I haven't really touched on that yet, but most of the game for most people will have to do with NPC encounters, okay? Going out, fighting things, uh, you know, going out with a group, going down into dungeons, uh, trying to get drops, uh, leveling up, getting some XP, uh, trying to take down encounters, uh, larger, bigger raids, all that. So most of most of the time for most of the players will be spent with the NPC encounters. And what they're trying to do is change that from being static you know, Groundhog Day is the word they like to use, where everything's just always the same, you get used to it, you're like, yep, going back to this zone, I already know exactly how it's gonna be, I know exactly what's gonna happen, I know what happens when I pull this guy, I know that this guy wanders, I know they're trying to get away from that by making it dynamic. So how are they gonna do that? Well, for number one, there are events that occur that completely change a population of a zone or a population of a group of NPCs within the zone. Now, that's not gonna happen all the time, it's not like they don't want you, you know, there's a, there's a, there's a way to do things without overdoing things. Let me put it that way. So Visionary Realms wants you to be able to go to an area, learn things, and then when you come back, you have experience and you can lead a group through or give advice to other players going through it. They want that. Okay, that's good. That's a good thing. That's a social experience. Okay, that helps the, the social environment. And you'll notice everything in Pantheon Rise of Fallen really kind of comes back to, is it social? Is this going to improve this social environment or not? And everything in their game is meant to lead towards a social encounter or social events. But anyway, so there will be events that occur on occasion, and I mean every once in a while. And there could, there's all kinds of reasons this event could happen. It could happen based on things that have happened that the players inside the zone have done. It, it's, it could be based on the weather, it could be based on all kinds of things. So everything works within the other systems, okay? It's like a living, breathing world where the, the weather affects this and also that, where, you know, killing a bunch of this mob affects the, this zone because this zone is mostly that mob, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So when these events happen, though, it changes what's going on in that zone. So it could be like Drake right from VR's mouth, like an invading force of storm giants who uh, start attacking the hill giant camp. That's their words, not mine. So as you can see, they got these things where once... Once a zone reaches a certain point, something new can happen. And not only that, but the NPCs themselves have dispositions and behaviors. They have certain things that they do. So it's a uh, it's an NPC artificial intelligence, basically. And they're calling them advanced behaviors or dispositions. Some of them might have it built into them to flee if they're, if they're overwhelmed, right? Or they might have to stand up and fight to the end. Some NPCs will be inclined to help other NPCs in the area if they're getting attacked. Some will not. Some will target certain classes within the group that's attacking them, and, and the NPCs themselves, their movement speeds can vary, especially if they feel outmatched. There are more than just these in the works, but some of the ones that have been confirmed is the alarmist, right? Like the guy who runs out and grabs somebody else, the bully, Craven, the opportunist, the protector, and the strategist. So those are some, not all, of the dispositions that you can encounter out in the game world that make things different and make them not the Groundhog Day effect. Another really cool thing, and I made a whole video about it, you can check it out, the Living Codex. So this is all about powerful spells and abilities. In multiplayer, uh, massive multiplayer online games, it is common that you find some rare item out in the world. You're out adventuring or crafting, 
uh, but the abilities and spells are more often just learned from trainers or even just given to you just, just because you leveled up. But in Pantheon, many of the more rare and exotic spells, the really powerful ones and abilities, are found not at your trainer, but for example, a wise sage hiding in the depths of a dungeon, or at the top of a remote tower, or whatever. These are rare, special, and powerful spells and abilities that have to be found out in the world. So that's another cool thing. So not only will you be in the market, you know, as you start getting up into the later levels of trying to, you know, get good gear and get awesome drops and all this epic kind of stuff but you'll also be wanting to get these epic spells and abilities right and then as if that's not enough as if that's not cool enough and that is cool enough then there are certain things you can get out in the world that also can add to those powerful spells and abilities and kind of you have a little bit of play there as far as what they do how long they last uh, is an aoe or not that kind of thing so there it even the living codex goes even further than just a place to store a power spell in your abilities but also to tinker with the epic ones as well so there's another way that it's evolving the mmo landscape as we know it another way that it's evolving the mmo landscape is the situational gear it's not like you can just go out and get a weapon and it's good for everything right and it's good for all encounters every raid all that kind of thing or or gear you know armor and things like that to where you're like well i got the best it's not that simple because things are dynamic in Terminus, the world of Pantheon, Rise of Fallen. You need situational gear, right? Uh, th the reason why is because, well, you need to think about where are you? What are you going to fight next? Who in my group is what class? And what items do they have that may help defeat the next encounter? Uh, so you got climates and atmospheres. You're going to need certain gear for certain atmospheres. Or maybe the mob type is really hard. So you maybe need a bane type or like an undead or a dragon kind. Some kind of bane or some kind of extra boost to help your group get through these specific mobs or raid encounter. So there will be multiple sets of gear for multiple sets of situations, right? And you may not be the, you may be a great tank, for example. You may be a great tank. You may be really good at most encounters, but maybe you don't have the set of gear for this really cold environment you know maybe you'll have to reach out for help uh, from other players socially in the world in order to help you overcome this weakness that you have because you don't have this particular situational gear and it's needed for this area do you see where i'm going with this so that makes things all these things what they do is they make a dynamic world to be simple all these things and there's more than what i've just talked about today but i think this is a pretty good foundation to say that it is not just simply an old mmo this is not just simply everquest re-released with a fresh very beautiful coat of paint this is a brand new experience this is something we've not had before will it feel like the mmos of old it most certainly will but it won't be those. It will be its own. It will stand on its own legs as its own MMORPG. As, in my opinion, the coolest PvE game you could possibly get your hands on in this day and age. And if no one takes these systems and runs with them in the future, I don't think anybody will ever topple it as far as the fun, old-school feel goes. I don't think they can or will, and I don't honestly don't know if i would trust i can't think of anybody else out there a developer that i would think could pull it off you know this is the perfect group of people growing up around this game and making it exactly what we want it to be with the feelings and the the and the experience that they have with these mmos it's going to be hard to match so i really think this game's going to be here for the long haul i think we're going to be playing it for decades and Honestly, I think the only way that this game will ever, will people like me at least, will want to go to another game is if this particular team decides to do a new game in 15 years or so and, and decides to take what they've learned from Pantheon and, and try for something even better. So, guys, I hope this helped. I hope that you were able to learn something or, or at least get you to feel good about Pantheon Rise of Fallen or whatever. I, I really appreciate you listening to the video, and if you made it this far, thank you very much for listening to me blather on about Pantheon Rise of Fallen. It's mainly what I do here. And guys, if you're not already subscribed, please consider doing so, especially once again, if you're interested in Pantheon-related content. That's mainly what I focus on. I do also talk about Camelon Change, ARPGs, RPGs, anything else that uh, fits with the RPG genre. I usually talk about that stuff too, but I hope 
hope you enjoyed today's video. And until next time, God bless and happy game. But please just subscribe. I can't even describe being part of my tribe. I'll even offer you a bribe. But just please just subscribe and hit the bell notification too.